Okay, so um, my name is Noam McLaughlin, as I said. I, I want to talk about really data and how we understand what friendly buildings are. And a lot of that is focused on really the experience of the people using those buildings, um, which I think is really, really fundamental. If we really understand what chief executives of organizations around the world are really concerned about keeping them awake at night, it's about their human capital. And that's not just about attracting the best people, it's actually about retaining them, but also about organizing that talent really, really well to enhance their businesses. Um, and there is a massive war for talent. So this is from LinkedIn data, and it just tells you globally, these big tech giants, how long people actually stay there. A bit frightening, eh? So there is a massive war for talent, and whether you think about uh, real estate, the workplace, but just generally businesses, businesses are, getting, are going through transformation. The, the big banks, the um, big consumer companies are being challenged by tech companies, and they're going through digital transformation. Uh, and therefore, we need to create a digital workplaces, digital buildings to respond to that challenge, because what digitization is about is about understanding your customer. And we, who are providing buildings and environments, need to understand our customer much better. So it's not just about efficiency anymore, it's very much about productivity and definitely about experience. And so we need to develop the, cool, the tools and the competency sets to actually do that. Uh, to explain that a little bit more, um, you may be familiar with a long-term sort of um, uh, business model called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, uh, which is based, it's been around for 30, 40 years now, uh, but basically says you, the, the, you start up with basic needs, and the further you go up this pyramid, this hierarchy, the, cl the stronger the relationship with your customer or your employee is. And what I want to do is really use this as a demonstration of how we can um, manage our workplaces, our real estate, in a very, very different way to get to understand our customers, whether they're the occupiers, from, uh, if you're a landlord, or whether they're your employees, if you're a corporate. And I think it's really, really important, because as an industry... We typically start with focusing on the product, i.e. the building. And what we've got to really do is change that mindset and think about what experience do we want to create and curate and then work backwards, yeah? So we're typically focused on the technology or the building or the infrastructure, but what, do we actually, what actually experience do we want to create? So let's start at the bottom. So the main, main, a lot of the focus on IoT is around the phys physiological needs, um, i.e. being able to change the temperature of a building or changing the lighting of a building. Or we talked about you know, security previously. And that's really, really important. You've got to get those right. Um, I think to some degree there's a bit of um, product focus there. I've seen a lot of buildings where you go into a meeting room and you have to change the lights with an app when actually a switch is really good. <laughs> but um, clearly, personalization of the working environment is a thing, an important consideration. But, you know, let's get the basics right, the physiological. Let's not think about, again, the experience we're trying to create and uh, not forget that. And let's move up the hierarchy to security. Now, this is a real, real question now. Because as more and more devices in the workplace and our buildings are connected, there are real threats. And we, as owners of buildings, need to manage those. Landlords have traditionally been managing things like power, which is critical to a business. So the next level up is to manage the infrastructure, the networks in a building. You know, all that facial recognition data needs to be managed by somebody. Somebody's got to take responsibility for it. Coffee machines, it's an enormous amount of data. All these coffee machines now are all connected, or can be if you want to, and you can build up a real picture of your organization by just managing, uh, sorry, just analyzing the coffee machine data. 
But actually, let's go further up, the social dimension. You may be familiar with this uh, development in London. If you're a, a fan of Pink Floyd, if, you go, if you're old enough like me to remember bands like that, uh, it's on one of their album covers. It's now the, or it will be very shortly, the European headquarters of Apple. But one of the great things about Battersea Power Station is the app. And it's not about how you get in the building, all that type of stuff. It's actually about the community. The app has 750 community groups now in that locality. Everything from marketing to big data to um, yoga, yoga groups to um, uh, cycling. Clearly, there's groups around that on the internet. Or, you, know, you, can, you can connect with people all around the world if you want to. But what this is doing, connecting people in the building across different, different organizations, but in that locality, is bringing the physical and the virtual together, which is incredibly powerful. Okay? It's creating that social cohesion around this place. And that, that really, really does enhance experience. And what you want to do is create experiences that actually bring people together. And there's lots of things like meetups. And you want to create environments that people choose the meetup in your place to actually connect with people. This is where this is really, really powerful and really, really important. But let's even go further up. Esteem. We're in the Instagrammable world now. Everything's Instagrammed and photographed and shared. But what's actually, um, this actually is a, a, um, a reception of Condé Nast in London. This is actually in the reception where you are encouraged to take a picture uh, to actually share and post. Okay? Nike on the top of their building now has a place just to take pictures so you can relate to the brand. Okay? Share an affinity and relationship with the brand. Yeah, and, you know, we're seeing more and more of that. So we're actually seeing Instagrammable Instagram league tables. We, as a business, are tracking Google reviews. Okay? I haven't found anybody in the real estate world who's actually done a Google review yet on a building. But there are buildings now around Europe with thousands and thousands of reviews of people going there and saying what they think and, relate, and, and giving that information, that data. But finally... Self-actualization. This is the one that really, really gets the, you know, the, the hook. Okay? And this is about and, you know, I've, uh, asking people or, or encouraging people to think about, I've achieved something, so what, how am I going to develop next? And this is where education becomes really important to the workplace. And we as a business see a lot of trends around offices starting to connect with universities and colleges but actually creating environments to learn, have those meetups, share information, share knowledge, create learning in the workplace, in the, in the campus, whatever you're developing, whatever you're managing. You need to create these places and you need to get people to connect and, this is, and, and help them to self-develop. They will always recognize that and value that and they'll be sharing that all around the world about what they're doing and who they're doing it with. So all that combines together to create this great, fantastic, compelling customer experience where people will want to come to work. Okay? One of the biggest threats to us as an industry is the working from home factor. We do loads of data analytics. We see buildings all across Europe on a Friday getting down to 20% occupancy. People aren't turning up. If they're not turning up, there's no value in real estate. Forget it. We need to create and create that value by encouraging people to invest in the commute and want to come to work and want to collaborate with colleagues and want to learn in the, in the environments you create. That's the challenge. And IoT has a fantastic, fantastic um, role to play in that, the Internet of Things. And data can support that because by using IoT and the data behind it, we can understand experience and drive it and improve it and enhance it. And that's what we're doing. And I'm just going to talk about some of the things we're doing. We've heard a lot about apps, building apps. One building app we analyzed, just for six months actually, one billion lines of data. That sounds a bit scary, but what it does is tell you an enormous amount about your customer. 
enormous amount of, not individuals, but we profile patterns of behavior. Where they sh which coffee shops do they like to go and have coffee in? Interesting experience. When do they turn up? How do they turn up? Why they turn up? All that type of stuff. Really, really important. There are an enormous amount of sources of data that we just haven't even thought about looking at. Building management systems have been around for years. Hardly anybody's been looking at the data. We talked about facial recognition replacing access control systems. All those access control systems have got enormous amount of data. You can find out how many people are using the space on a daily basis for years. Nobody's bothered asking and looking at that. These are key metrics that we can, we can look at. But you can also bring in things like weather data, transport data, to get the real broad um, view of the experience of the people using your environment. How they get to your building, how they get to your campus, uh, do they not come if it's... I, I did, I, I was in Warsaw recently, and I went to see a client, and I said, it's a bit quiet here, and the, the guy said, well, actually, it's raining, people don't turn up when it's raining. <laughs> that's what he really said. Now, if that's the base, we need to understand why, and create, again, create experiences to encourage people to turn up. Um, there's lots of different data and lots of different types of data, as I just talked about, in terms of both complexity, i.e. binary data like access control, which is just sort of a timestamp, somebody turning up, somebody leaving, somebody turning up, somebody leaving, very basic data, all the way to sort of unstructured data, data like on the apps, or uh, we talked about surveys earlier on, um, and things like well-being data is um, much more complex. But the great thing is we can actually not only understand current activity or past activity, but we can start to predict activity. We can start to predict that if it is going to be bad weather in a couple of weeks' time or next week, we can actually then change the, the, the temperature. We can change even the food offering um, in our places of work to align to that, to enhance the experience. This is the type of stuff we can do. We can look, if, you're a, if you're a developer or a landlord, you can understand the occupancy actually in the workplace to see if the business is growing or contracting, which is really, really valuable if you want to keep and retain your, your tenants because then you can start to think about how can I either enable that company to grow or to consolidate. We've developed a platform called ACE, Activity and Customer Experience Platform, but the, the fundamental reason to do it is this, because this is the conventional model. We develop a great new workplace, we invest a lot in it, and then that's it. We don't do anything with it, really. We, we manage it, we make sure that it's compliant, but we don't improve it or enhance it. And so over time, over the course of the lease, the experience just declines, whilst the cost goes up. And what we're trying to do is understand the experience to marginally and continuously improve it. Just little things that make a big difference. It doesn't require a lot of investment. So we can track that. So actually experience and cost align. We're looking at things like, obviously, the experience, the activity, the community, and the service. How, you know, uh, things like maintenance and fault reporting, all that type of stuff we can actually learn from to enhance those type of things. So that's what we've developed. It's called ACE, Activity and Customer Experience. It's taking the data from all those sources. It's using machine learning to understand and correlate different patterns, different trends, different opportunities for improving that experience or enhancing that activity uh, to actually get our buildings valued in terms of their usage and the community and the level of affinity and esteem that people have with those environments. So we get lots of dashboards like this. Um, we can benchmark. We can look at different, different buildings against each other. Uh, I mean, this is quite interesting. This is a, a bunch of buildings in terms of activity. And I did say, you know, these are very, very large buildings. And I did say there's this average, uh, average occupancy over a year worth of data. Uh, and you're getting down to 16% in some cases. But there's some people up here 100%. The co-workers. The co-working environments are getting it right. They are connecting people. They are managing their environments in a very different way. People are coming in there to do business 
and connecting to each other. And uh, that's certainly, um, certainly proved in the data. Uh, so we, we focus on what we call a buzz score. We're trying to understand the buzz in each environment. And that is a combination, as I said, of experience, of activity, of service, and community. Uh, just creates lots of different opportunities for, um, for um, improvement. Little things, as I said, that make big differences. And if we can keep improving things on a marginal basis, we're going to en enhance the experience. So, for example, we've mapped out the visitor experience across a whole campus. Whether people arrive by car, by bike, or by public transport, all the way into the building, all the way through the building, all the way into the meeting room, and then all the way back out of the building. And by understanding that, we've totally re-engineered the car parking experience, we've totally changed the car parking systems, and we've also re-engineered the apps. Only little things, the app's still there, but it's doing it, the algorithms behind the app are doing things in a very different way. Um, and, and a very, very simple one, yoga classes in a big environment. This, this, this big building had lots of yoga classes, but they're all in the morning or in, or in the evening. We found out that people actually wanted them at lunchtime, and suddenly doubled the number of people who were going to the yoga classes. Such a small thing, but if you don't ask, you don't know, do you? So... Benefits of ACE, Activity and Customer Experience Platform. Marginal gains to enhance experience. Enhanced service provision. Actually, we can actually understand when faults are occurring before people even report them. So the data through sensors can understand if the coffee machine's going out of action because the pattern's changed, i.e. typically takes about a minute to get your coffee. If people just go to the coffee machine for 20 seconds and go away again, the coffee machine's broken, but nobody's going to report it because they think somebody else is going to report it. So the data reports it and gets it sorted. Clever little things. But it's just a small thing, but it stops that poor experience. Working with one large bank, I think I'm running out of time, this is the last slide. One large bank who had activity-based working, agile working desks, they had 5,000 sensors. Across, uh, across their campuses. Um, people were turning up to work. They were, they were getting their laptops, plugging it into the monitor, uh, and then the uh, monitor didn't work, so they just go and sat and have a desk. They didn't bother reporting the fault. 10% of desks were in that, in that, on that basis. 10% of desks were not working, and nobody, knew, nobody really recognized it. The data showed this problem, and again, getting those 10% of 5,000 desks back in operation very, very quickly. So, lots of opportunity to enhance value, enhance activity, enhance experience. Um, and the important thing is clients and employees are becoming more data savvy as well. They're asking the questions. Is this a great experiential place to work? Well, I don't know, unless you've got the data. If you've got the data, you can prove it. You can prove that this campus, this environment, is better than that one. Um, Data is a critical to the success of attracting, maintaining, retaining clients and employees. Um, you need to provide that great experience because the experience is only relative to the competition. Leverage data and insight to enhance the experience all the time. Just continuously improve it. And then we can take that data to create new campuses and new developments and start from the experiential perspective. What experience do we want to create and come back to the product finally, to build a great environment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Uh, it's a great opportunity to have you here. Thank you for coming. Um, I think we're lucky that uh, it hasn't been raining today. <laughs> a lot of people turned up here. Just a quick question. I think that's just a Polish thing, but anyway. There okay. we go. <laughs> have you had your coffee already down the machine over there? Uh, in, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Stefan, you yeah. had it? Is it connected? <laughs> you, I, I'm, I, I'm sure it can be connected. I don't know if it is connected, but uh, we'll have to ask spaces that, I guess. Hopefully, we've not been hacked here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's def definitely a challenge, yeah. Okay, thank you. We got uh, some questions from the audience here. Uh, would, who do you think is responsible for creating the bus in the buildings? Is it the landlord or property manager? I think, I think, I think, I mean, I think, uh, oh, uh, 
Who benefits from it? I think the landlord massively benefits because we're seeing definitely premium, what we call super prime value, super prime rents being experience driven. And we can, I can show you, demonstrate that in, in a number of uh, capitals across Europe now where the places with the best experience are commanding the best rent, okay? So the, the, there's definitely a vested interest for the landlord to do it. Um, but there's also, the, there's, there's also not a vested interest for either the property manager to do it. I was at a, 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 an event yesterday where a major landlord said he had just sacked his property manager because they weren't providing him the right data. The property manager didn't even know he had to provide the data to him. But he wanted this data to give him the insight to keep and retain his tenants. So absolutely, the property manager has a vested interest in doing it. And finally, the tenant, because ultimately, as my starting slide was all about human capital. You want to attract the best people. Um, uh, you want to keep them, and you want to organize them in the best possible way so that they are sharing innovation and collaborating and communicating and coming to events and learning and developing. Therefore, You've got a massive vested interest. So the answer is all three. <laughs> There's a question about your first impression from this building. What's, the, so, what's your exper experience so far? This building? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Be honest. Oh, well, I, think it, I mean, I think it works. Um, I think there are a few things that you I mean, you know, there's a difference between, the, I guess, the, 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 the actual physical building and the... Um, and the, and the sort of experience you go through. Uh, but, I, you know, I don't, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with it, but I think there's lots of things that could be improved, and if you had that data, you could just understand it better and, do, and manage it in a slightly different way. I'm not talking about spending lots of money on this type of stuff. It's the little things that get people, you know, fed up, really, and those are the opportunities to, to make the change, yeah. Probably something you can discuss with, uh, with the tenant <laughs> or with the developer here afterwards. Thank you very much, no, Neil. Thank you. That was uh, Neil McLachlan from Night Frank. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. I don't think it's a thing. I think it's more about a concept of being able to understand what your users, your customers, are actually doing in the building. So it's actually about collecting data and actually analysing that data to uh, continuously improve that experience that you want to um, create for your customers. Yeah, it's the workplace, it's, um, it's the experience. The experience is, oh, it's got lots of factors. I mean, at one level you don't want poor experience, so we all know what that is. So let's get rid of poor experience things that go wrong and frustrations and friction, but on the positive side, you know, things that um, are, are really, really um, helping people to develop um, and uh, enhance their, their knowledge and learn from each other and develop and um, you know, that's, that's, about, that's what the workplace is, it's about connecting people, it's not about processing, it's about bringing people together because you know, the robots, the AI tools can do all that stuff. What we need to do is be at the really front end of, of, of that thinking and create environments and curate environments that enable people to thrive in that environment. And that's what a great workplace will do.